Good afternoon. Whoops, I forgot. Uh, excuse me, I want to plug myself in. That was a bad audio start. <laughs> Jumping in and going, there's something missing from this picture. Plugging in the microphone. Hear me okay now, even better than I did before. Hi, well, <laughs> welcome to my daily chat. My name is Barry Selby, and today's um, episode is number 502. And the topic today is the is the masculine, masculinization of women, part three, the future. Um, before I get into all this, let me start with introducing myself and what I'm about. Again, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women attract and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last, getting up for two years now, I do a daily talk on Facebook called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is actually a part three of a three-part series I didn't plan on doing, but it showed up, called The Masculinization of Women, Part Three, The Future. So to recap quickly, briefly, succinctly, I talked about this, um, this, is this is Tuesday. So Sunday was part one, that was episode 500, which was the masculinization of women that actually became a talk about um, the sexual revolution and stuff like that, the construct of the framework of where we've, come, where, we've, where we've been and where we've come to, so kind of the past. Yesterday's talk, which was episode two, sorry, sorry, was episode 501, part two of masculinization of women, was about masculine women in relationships. We should say the dysfunction of masculine women in relationships. And so if you haven't watched those two episodes, I invite you to go back and watch those. I'll put, I'll put the replays and the links in the comments so you can get to them if you don't know how to find them. And so this is part three. I don't know if this will be part four, I have no idea. <clears throat> right now it's a, part, it's a three part series. It could be a four part, four part series tomorrow, we'll see. But today's episode is about the future because we all talk a lot about, especially, excuse me, let me frame that. Currently, a lot of us are talking about the dysfunction between men and women highlighted by the Me Too conversation as well as a lot of things coming to light surrounding that. I have this feeling that I should speak about the future. This came up yesterday, actually, so it's been sitting with me for a while now, for a day at least. And my sense about this, my, my um, feeling is that we haven't talked about where we're going. We're talking a lot about the past, we're talking about a lot about the present, but going forward, we don't have a lot of clarity, it seems, or at least not, not it's been voiced publicly. So may I be one of the first, not the only one, I'm sure, but one of the first to speak about this. And speaking about the, the masculinization of women, which I talked about in both yesterday and the day before's broadcast, about um, unpacking, uninstalling, de de disassembling that. I'm, not, I'm trying to find right words for it. Basically, helping women remember their feminine power and authority, which is actually more powerful than the masculine. I'll, re I'll, re I'll underline that one again. Women being masculine like, because it's not being masculine, masculine like, at least I would call it that, as in the masculinization of women, as I said, is, has been attributed to basically the way the structure of the world is set up. Social, social societies, social rules, the business world, and other things too have, have created a, not just space, but a conditioning where women have had to act like men in business, have to act like men, or have chosen to act like men in the dating arena, and it's created a lot of dysfunction, and actually I'm gonna throw another piece in here, the health issue. Ladies, when you are embodying masculine energy all the time, you're being disrespectful, detrimental, and destructive? To your own body. First of all, your stress level is going to go up a lot more, because by being the masculine, you're actually doing a lot of things that are out of a natural alignment for you. Let me sorry, sidebar for a second. Join me over here. Um, <laughs> one thing I'm very aware of is that as I'm speaking about this, this is a generalization. It's not for everybody. There are masculine women who are naturally masculine; it works for them perfectly. Same as there are feminine men who are naturally feminine; it works for them too. Independent of sexual preference, by the way. This is for straight and gay relationships. So let me be clear. So, okay, back on topic. So, generally speaking, to reframe what I said, 
most women, when you are embodying masculine energy and behavior to succeed in business, to do things in life, and you do it too much of the time, you're raising your stress level because it's not natural for you. And you're going to be on guard because that's generally the way the masculine men live. Yep, we do. But we're built for it more easily. So it's more actually part of our adrenaline system. And we don't, it's like, it. it let's just say this. When someone says they've got burnt out adrenals, which is one thing I've heard about, it seems to me from what I've heard, and it may be just me, but most of the time I've heard it, women have suffered from that more than men have. Women, again, this is going from my own, my own um, non-scientific and vague recollections of what I've heard from people I know. But I've heard a lot of women go through burnt out adrenals, but not men as much. Which suggests to me, again, based on very, unsci very unsci scientific lack of research perspective, so this is my perspective, it could be totally inaccurate, your body doesn't handle the way that being masculine very well, especially not compared with men, because you're not wired that way. So that's one thing. As a part of that, there's also hormonal imbalance. I've heard from friends of mine who are um, health experts in the female arena, being women themselves, that a lot of women who compete in the masculine energetic are being detrimental to their own health on the level of hormones, um, their own, um, what's the other thing we was talking about? There's a chemistry imbalance, basically, which again, adrenals, etc. Your bodies are getting injured or, or um, disempowered by being in the masculine too much. So please don't do it too much, too much. All right, so moving back to the main topic tonight, which is the future. Going forward from this point, I'd like to think that we're going to make some progress and some changes rather than reverting to the old paradigm. Like the Me Too movement isn't going to go into hibernation again. I also don't, don't believe that the Me Too movement will stand where it is. It's going to evolve. Something will change, whether it's societal, whether it's legal, whether it's behavioral, whether it's um, intersexual, is that the right term? Inter intergender? I don't know how to describe it. But it feels like there has to be some changes. The, the Me Too movement is a big, late coming, so I won't say timely, wake up call for both men and women. Well, now we've woken up, or now we're waking up, what do we do now? So my, my intention with this conversation is where do we go from here? Because it feels like we're very much in the process right now, which may take some time because it's been, some of the stuff has been buried for 20, 30, 40 years for some people. So I understand it's not something you go, okay, move on, let's go to the next. Very clear. So the question then is, as a society, as a culture, how do we as men and women evolve and grow in a healthy way from this lesson, from this transformation, from this movement? And I'm not saying I have ideas, but I do have some philosophical perspectives to add to your thoughts. Because I'm sure there'll be, I, I hope there'll be, some changes in the politics and the legal system that will support the evolution of this culture to a way that has respect for men and women. More need on the women's side than on the men's side right now, to be honest. But both genders definitely can raise some level of respect because men don't respect each other either. So having a level of respect to become part of the psychology and part of the culture will be a good step forward. On a bigger picture, what I believe, what I pray, what I hope is coming, is coming forward, it's been evolving, is a lot more feminine leadership, a lot more feminine mastery, a lot more feminine um, engagement in big, I don't say issues, but big changes. You know, Marianne Williamson's talking about, as a, as a Marianne Williamson has an event and a teaching she's done a few years now, especially before the 2016 elections, called Sister Giant. And that wording fits for me in a lot of ways. It's the feminine sisterhood, but in giant size, like stepping to a bigger place, stepping to a more powerful place. It's, it's, it's way past time. It's very necessary. And I feel it's time that it happens. <laughs> I'm trying to say it that way. But I'm feeling this, this discord because we're not there yet. So this is the bigger piece I'm talking about more of what most of what is bringing is the feminine leadership model, the feminine inclusivity, collaboration, cooperation, and power step into leadership on the planet. That's my big vision, intention, request, in, uh, invitation, when you will call it. As part of that, 
I'm looking I, I'm looking for, holding for, believing that considering and all these things in my head about how does that happen because frankly I don't know I'm putting out these philosophical ideas without saying here's the here's the baby steps to get there here's the steps to get there I'll, I know I'll be part of the conversation I'm, I'm I'm including myself in that conversation right now but there's a lot of mundane things that have to happen too and some it's gonna there is gonna be such a high level of overarching um, societal level change but I also believe there's going to be some very like nuts and bolts, fundamental, mundane steps that need to be taken to support that big vision. So, on that level, I feel there's a time now for women to be heard. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this now, but I'm going to be careful. I say this. All right. The hysteria that's happened a lot with with what happened to Kavanaugh, with the women protesting the votes. It's challenging for me as a man to listen to, just to be honest. But at the same time, I feel like women right now, your power is going to be in... <laughs> well, I'm, it's going to use, I was going to use uh, Albert, Albert Einstein's analogy about, or, or, or quote, as, as the, pro the, the problem can't be solved at the level of the mind that created the problem. So yelling and screaming at the men May, may may feel good but I strongly suspect it doesn't work very well because most men will shut down, close off, ignore, turn deaf when you can out negotiate them when you can out maneuver them when you can hit them where they live you see I'm speaking as a man about other men I believe there's a chance for change to happen more rapidly when women are stepping into places of leadership, authority but with such clarity, decisiveness, and focus that they can actually cut men's balls off with their words. Yes, I'm saying this. I learned um, 10, 11 years ago in a training that I was at, the power of the feminine when it's in, in its display. So I'm gonna put this in here as, a, as a, a hint of what's to come. In that conversation, we were talking about the evolution of masculine and feminine in relationship and dating. This was a sexual, um, polarity conversation actually it was a training retreat and the way that it was described was how does a woman who's in a two feminine choose her man select her man as it were invite her man because the challenge with the feminine is it's embracing a lot and it sees a lot and well, the way it was described was that the way she carries herself is she's yearning for that energetic of a truly grounded present masculine man who will hold space for her and ravish her and take her to heights she's never been before ideally but she will not accept open invitations in fact the way she may be walking through the through the grocery store shopping and be looking with those those yearning eyes those clarity eyes at every man in the place but if he isn't the one who can honor that respect that and step into that role and then he approaches or tries to subvert his way into her space her feminine energy is like a large, razor-sharp, two-handed sword. And the power of her feminine will shred him where he stands. Without saying a word. So the feminine carries this, this two-sided energy in a way. Deep yearning, crying out for that masculine, hearted, brave soul that will stand with her. Who will honor her, take care of her, love her and all that. At the same time, no other man gets a chance no other man gets, a, gets, gets an opportunity so that for me is a, is a piece of the puzzle it's a it's a cornerstone of what I'm speaking about here the feminine energy that I'm talking about that, that we need more than ever on the planet because basically to be blunt according to the if the scientific teachings are accurate in 15 30 years we're going to be screwed on this planet and that is thanks to the male energy just to be blunt I believe that one of the only ways we're going to stop the um, driving off the cliff is to bring the feminine energy in and I don't mean <laughs> I know Thelma Louise comes to mind on that topic but I don't want to mean that but I'm recognizing more and more that there's a transformation coming that we as human beings can only change the course of our history and our future if the feminine steps up big time both for the 
civilization of the culture we live in, but also for our own cultural evolution and growth. So to go back to that sword for a second, the, the two-handed sword I was mentioning, that's the level that you ladies can bring to any conversation with men that doesn't require you to be hysterical, doesn't require anybody yelling, but it does require you to stand firm in your truth, your conviction and your, your integrity in a way that he cannot deny, whoever the he is. These are more of the fundamental mundane steps I'm talking about, is bringing that level of self-respect, self-reverence, and honoring yourself so that you learn how to channel that visceral pain, that visceral yearning, that visceral energy in a way that is, is not going to be thrown out in a weak way. Because a lot of the women who have been voicing their concerns to the men, when they're yelling from the backs of, of, of rooms, it, it's like it doesn't seem to have any effect. It just simply interrupts. But when you come in at the level that the men are at and you transform the conversation by elevating it and taking it deeper at the same time, at the same time, then there's going to be a considerable shift that can happen. That, I believe, is where the future begins. I think that's it. This is a seed. It's a, again, a seed planting. I planted a seed yesterday, the day before, and today. And I feel there's more to come. But not yet. I welcome your thoughts and your input, by the way, on this one. This is this is part of a a, a ongoing conversation that I realize I'm starting that started a few days ago. That's coming forward about how we um, transform our culture. And it's time, ladies. It is time. So thank you for watching. This is my daily Facebook live. Um, the 500s are becoming interesting. <laughs> this is the third 500 broadcast I've done. Um, so quick reminders, by the way, this is Facebook Live first. If you're watching it on YouTube, I'll tell you to get there. Um, it also gets to my podcast. So this is my Facebook Live. It goes, goes on to my business page on Facebook after I finish recording. Um, again, I invite, well, I'll tell you that in a second. Um, so that is my business page. is barryselby.author. I also then put it onto my YouTube channel later on, which will be later on tonight, um, which is the username is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe there and you can watch my watch all of my videos there. And also eventually they're going to be on my podcast, which is uh, Messages from the Masculine, the name of the podcast on iTunes. And you can subscribe and download them there for the audio versions you can listen to when you're driving, biking, whatever. I do invite your comments and questions on this. This is, this is, a, this is a beginning conversation, same as yesterday and the day before. So I invite your questions, comments, thoughts as well. I'm not sure if tomorrow will be at part four. We'll see. Topics unfold as they unfold. I will be back on again tonight at 6.30 p.m. Um, so basically an hour from now with my friend uh, Gina Hendricks. We do this. Th we do a Tuesday night broadcast, which will be a whole different thing. It'll be on dating, mating, and relating. So join us for that one. Um, so you'll see it on my page, on my, on my personal page at uh, 6.30 p.m. With that, I think that's it. No homework. Well, I invite you to think about this. Your homework is to consider what I said and see if it resonates. If there's questions, thoughts, ideas, discussions, arguments, agreements, whatever, I invite your comments below, whether I'm watching on Facebook or watching on YouTube. And again, I'll put the replays for the last two broadcasts in the comments below, wherever you're watching this. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual broadcast time. I'll see you then. Take care of yourselves. Bye.